This is Life, Body, Business, Impact with Fatima. Welcome, friends. I am so grateful to have you here. I'm your host, Fatima Ingalls, fitness expert, best-selling author, lifestyle entrepreneur, founder of the Life, Body, Business, Fit Systems, and co-founder of the amazing Freedom Retreats. My mission is to positively impact 10 million lives, to inspire you to wake up and live from your bucket list of dreams instead of waking up one day with a bucket list of regrets. Get ready to be inspired with weekly episodes and interviews that disrupt your thinking and motivate you to build your best life, body and business. To change one life is to change many. So come with me now and let's get started with yours. Hey friends, we are back with part two of the two-part interview with Unstoppable Tracy. And you are soon going to find out exactly why this phenomenal human is known as Unstoppable. She is a number one award-winning international speaker and TEDx speaker who has shared stages with people like John Travolta, Jane Fonda and Mark Wahlberg. She's also spoken in over 40 different countries. Tracy is single-handedly responsible for bringing Uber, the massive brand Uber, into Canada. She has 10 x her income in the last two years. She's a humanitarian and an accomplished athlete, having captained a 110-foot tall ship, climbed the Himalayan mountains, and Oprah Winfrey magazine shared her story as quest for the gold World Cup sailor. Tracy is truly unstoppable. She is a phenomenal human being. And by the way, did I mention Tracy is a born four-way amputee? So let's get right into it and listen to what this amazing woman has to share with all of us. You have had such an impressive career, the people that you've worked with, Tracy, obviously all your accomplishments um, as an athlete. I had a question in relation to um, why you wanted to, it's going back to what we were talking about before, but I was wondering, why did you want to ski? You seem to obviously have had an adventurous spirit from a very <laughs> young age, you know, and I love that. But why were you so determined to ski? What, what piqued your interest? It, it was, uh, well, again, you know, somebody just said that they're for very, and this is same in sailing. So for more able-bodied people with disabilities, uh, like some of my competitors w- w- were like missing a thumb, missing a foot, maybe maybe paralyzed from their waist down, and I call those pa- paper cuts. <laughs> when you've got yeah. when you're a four-way amputee, those are paper cuts. It's just a thumb. You got nine more, right? Wait, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, what, what's that big deal? But there were, and there were certainly more complicated disabilities. But even with, you know, paralyzed from the waist down, they've got great big beefy arms and they're men and all of these bits and pieces with the, the muscle and the machismo and, and people believing in them and people wanting to be a support. Whereas people, for me, everybody's like, you're so inspirational, but then they don't want to help me because they're afraid of me getting my hopes up when they think my vision's unrealistic. And so, So, in fact, when when the guys are like at a dock getting their stuff dropped in the water or out of the water, there were people like not helping me. So I was purposely left alone on a crane to get my boat in and out. And and so with skiing, it was the same kind of thing. There was a few there was a amputee one legged skier. uh, And so I'd heard about this ski program for that amputee because I am. You know, amputee sounds like amputated, and and I was born this way. They don't know why. Just a fluke. I was born this way. So I wasn't amputated, but I I refer to myself as a four-limb amputee for lack of a better expression uh, because there's four limbs missing. So I'd heard about this, you know, this amputee skiing, and so I wanted to ski because amputees can ski. So I had it in my 11-year-old brain amputees can ski and and in school they actually kept me out of gym 
So, you know, you hear I love swimming, I love skiing, I'm a, an advanced scuba diver, I fly planes, I jump out of planes. Fly planes, you know, wow. I fly plane, I, I ride horseback, you know, I kayak, I canoe, and, and I climb the Himalayas of Nepal, the Annapurna region, you know, I would outward bound instructor. I just, just uh, in November, uh, scaled down the outside of a 25-story high-rise building in very windy conditions, I might add, in downtown Toronto at Young and Bloor, the busiest corner in Toronto on this 25-story building, which is like at each story is about 10 feet. So it's like 250 feet in the air, which is nothing compared to the Himalayas. But I tell you, that was a lot scarier than the Himalayas somehow. I don't know why, but it was way scarier. But I just did that, November. So it's not even about the Himalayas, it was 1991, but I just scaled the building in 2018, November. So it's 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 always. Why did I go on why that tangent? Why did the the building? I mean, so many of the things you've told us that that you have oh, done, skiing. yeah, and and faced and and accomplished. You know, I just see so many um, lessons in business and in life. But what made you decide to scale the building? Well, so what both. It? Skiing, I'm sorry I didn't answer the question, the skiing and the building, both of them, there was the opportunity, right? So so with skiing, someone said there's this program, and then we go, and they say, I'm sorry, we can't help your daughter, and mom counter offers. And then with the building in November, I'm a TV show host of a show called Unstoppable You on Roku. Uh, Roku's like a like a like like an Apple box, a platform for TV. People can get the box in their usually in their local convenience sort of bigger box convenience type store and like an Apple box, there's a Roku box. So there's like 35 million viewers, which is so great, but it's not on cable. It's on this Roku uh, on, on the channel called TDC. And, and I was doing an interview that day at Young and Egg, at Young and Bloor and I was all dressed up. I was in a dress and I had my hair up and I had makeup on and I'm at Young and Bloor and I was going to go interview a big vice president and hopefully CEO. I was hoping to turn the VP interview into a CEO and VP interview. And on the street was um, a table getting set up for a drop zone. And that drop zone, that's what it's called when you set up the high ropes courses to repel and belay and climb and stuff like that. So they were setting up a drop zone on that 25-story building. They happened to be doing a fundraiser just randomly on the street that day. And and so I, I woke up on Monday morning ready to do an interview at Young and Bloor inside the building that they happened to be doing a drop zone on. Uh, and and then there it is. And why not? You know, unstoppable, Tracy, why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> there are opportunities everywhere, aren't there? But you are an incredibly ac- accomplished person and just – I know. I think your mum, um, yes, was with phenomenal. what she said to you when you were young, um, has actually shaped so much of what you decided to do with your life. Because, like you said, when you were a child, something happened, something was said, and and a child might have gone, "Okay, I'm not good enough," or or "I'm not meant to be here," or "I'm too overweight to do this," or or be here. And we either accept or reject things into our mind that play such a huge part in the person we become and the things we start doing in our lives yes so and and that's like that's that's true and that that confidence it's almost like a fake confidence like it wasn't that I wasn't petrified again to scale that building when I was but what was frustrating me was that they were this diverse organization and they've got all these white men (laughs) scaling down the outside of the building in suits and it's okay whatever their color of their skin is it's just that there was no diversity there was no other gender there was no other color there was no other ability level right there was it was just was just all suits and so and and I approached them and said you're, you are totally celebrating diversity with the fundraising and what your attempt is. Wouldn't it be great to have a female as well as a male? And wouldn't it be great to, and they were, they were, you know, at first, first I said, I would love to scale and I think it'd be so fabulous and I know how to drop zone and I'm a, you know, a repeller. I've done the Himalayas. And they looked at me with no hands and they said, I'm sorry, you won't be able to do it. 
But then when I changed the conversation to, wouldn't it be great to be diverse? You are representing, you know, Easter Seal Society and you are an organization for people with diverse needs and, and you've got all these men coming down. Wouldn't it be great to be a woman? Wouldn't it be great to have a person with a disability? Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't media go nuts if you had a four-way amputee scaling that building? It'd be fabulous for your coverage and you'd be able to make a, make a big difference. So I changed the conversation from being about me when they were saying no, no, no to about them driving media, which is the whole reason why they were doing it, right? You don't scale the buildings for nothing. They're doing it to drive awareness and some reason to catch attention. And so I, I dialed that up and then they didn't even then they didn't say yes. They said, will you talk to our drop zone team? But at first they were no. And then when I talked to the drop zone team, they didn't care about diversity, but they did care that I had repelled and was an outward bound leader. And I knew the ropes course. And even then they're like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, well, there's a truck. Can I repel off that truck there to demonstrate my ability? And then if you have confidence in the way I scale the truck, will you let me scale the building? And, and, that, and that they said, okay. And so then I scaled the truck from the back of the truck and then we scaled the building. And, and so it was different conversations for different people have different ways of hearing their concerns met. And each time I often started with my wishes. Uh, and I'll ha even now, after all these years, after 45 years later, I still accidentally start about me, 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 me. And, and I have to constantly remind myself to speak to the other person's pain, the other person's listening, the other person's need, and present them with a solution, and then what it is that you can offer to, to their solution, to their need, and frame it that way. And, and because I'm being a four-way amputee and people seem to tell me no all the time, I've been really lucky to have to do that all the time. But I think... You know, you, my mom was phenomenal, but she was tough love mom, right? She was a Liverpoolian mom after a war-torn city that, that the, uh, the unions were so amazing at being a stand for their employees and their rights that the unions basically closed all the factories in Liverpool. They got to win. They got to be right. And now the company couldn't afford to keep operating and they go out of business. And so sometimes there's a fine line between being right and and having that relationship. And that sometimes that's between you and a boss or you and your loved one, you and your daughter, you and your spouse, you and your neighbor. And so you sometimes you can be right or you can have the relationship. And and I think it's it's when you have the relationship and you're speaking to people's listening, then you get to get to the knowledge and more the facts and not about being right or wrong. You just get to share the knowledge, but you need to first have that relationship. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess in business, the relationships and everything in life, but relationships are so, so very important. And some people do really just want to be right. But I guess the saying is that a good negotiation is when both parties walk away, not completely happy, but there is still a relationship there. So yeah. there were some really great tips that you shared in all of that and in that experience of being able to scale that wall, um, like what's in it for them, you know, yeah. speaking speaking to them, what's in it for them. That's something that we all need to consider um, in our business. What is in it for them instead of starting with ourselves, which as human beings we naturally tend to, start talking about ourselves that's a really great great reminder and um i'm just going to frame it i think it's the same same thing that you were talking about and describing but i'll frame it a little bit differently and that is it's something that i say to my children what do i need to do to turn this no into a yes yes so like you said no. the k n o no is a k n o what do i need to do what do they need to hear from me what um, concern or fear do they need to have addressed for this to become a yes and obviously it's not every single time sometimes you know there are some instances where it's always going to be a no but that first no is often a um, like you know only too well just an indication of you haven't convinced me I need more information 
um, yeah. sins. And and if it ends up a no, sometimes it's an accepted no. Like if the harness they've got is way too big and I'm going to fall out of it, I don't want to be on that 25-story building falling out of it, right? So I'm small frame. Maybe the reason it's all big men doing it is because they only had one big harness, right? They may, You know, I'm making it up, but something like that, right? And so your teenagers might be, oh, right, like legally I'm not allowed to drive till after 16 or yeah I've done the parallel parking and I suck at it and I don't want to spend <laughs> 355 bucks on my my test when even if I pass everything else you're still going to fail me because I can't demonstrate parallel parking yet so that's why you're saying no we can't go do the test yet it's because you, you still don't have your parallel parking, right? So now they're like, yeah. oh, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to go fail. I want to learn to parallel park. I'm like, okay, so let's practice parallel parking some more. So is, sometimes the no is is okay, too. It's it's the knowing is on both sides of the conversation, either the person saying it or the person requesting. You find out what you don't know so that you can get it. And that's what I found, like, in my sailing and in my skiing and with Uber and with Air Canada and with pharmaceutical reform. Like, so, for example, in Canada, we had, uh, we used to have all of our pharmaceuticals covered. And then one day, the government, federal government, changed overnight paying for our pharmaceuticals. And I worked for the national big box convenience carrier. So, in Canada, it's called Shoppers Drug Mart. In, in Britain, it's called Boots. In the United yeah. States, it's called Walgreens. I don't know who your Walgreens Boots or Shoppers is in Australia. It's like chemist Warehouse in Australia. There are several. Chemist Warehouse, line. right? Yeah. So overnight, they stopped funding pharmaceuticals, and that was 55% of our profits. And and so now I'm a facilitator. I wasn't the VP or senior or strategist or whatever. I'm an organizational development-focused kind of person. I facilitate groups to, to see the best version of themselves. And so I facilitated with them. And we ended up outperforming the stock market the next month because what the groups did was, so so what, what can we do? Well, we increased our beauty items. We increased our food items. We increased our baby items. We increased our convenience items. And we outperformed the stock market, even though 55% of our profits for this many years before were in the red. Our pharmacy part of our balance sheet was in the red. And but we outperformed on food, beauty, convenience, baby items. So shame on us for not leveraging all of those sales for our stockholders and, and, and making that kind of money all those years before. It took pharmaceutical reform to kick us in the butt to relook at everything. And wow, look at all these other options and opportunities that... Hey, hey. that we're in front of you and you're like so how you know how come you skied or how come you scaled, scaled that building or even with the shoppers drug mart you know how come well the opportunities in front of you and sometimes people say you know you should write a book or you know you should quit your job and go full time with this or you should you know your daughter's super talented I think definitely should be in you know high performance ballet but the ballet coach for high performance is seven thousand dollars or something and we're like, we doubt for a second or we think, oh, wow, 7,000 or, well, quit my job. I've got three kids to feed. You know, and so we've got very real reasons to not jump for it and go for it. And you do have to, to weigh that all out. But sometimes you really got to weigh it out with a little less realism and a lot more facts. What don't you know? How could you embrace the possibility that even though you don't know how, you know you're going to pay rent next month? And so, you know, you're going to do whatever it takes to get that rent together. So if you quit your job and go for being an entrepreneur, you're still going to do whatever it takes to pay rent next month. You're going to figure it out. And and so is having the faith in yourself. Right. And even though you don't know where you're going to get $7,000 to to pay for a high performance coach for yourself in your business. Like, isn't that funny that we'll do it for our daughter in gymnastics, maybe, you know, and we'll do without all these different things so that we can rally $7,000 because our daughter deserves the best of the best coach and the best of the best possibility to do that particular sport. But why don't we do that in business? 
And you're like, how did I turn around 10 times my income? Well, I always had high performance coaches in my skiing and in my sailing when I went, when I went high performance, right? And I had trainers and instructors even when I wasn't high performance. But when I went high performance, I had high performance, expensive, next level coaching. And I would never did it in life. I'd never did that in business. And so when I did it in business and rallied someone like you, Fatima, and someone that's all about the holistic self. You know, my mom was phenomenal, and she was a tough love Liverpoolian mom from a tough town. And she's like, they say you got to tie your shoelaces? You got to tie your shoelaces. It wasn't about me having arms or not. Any any kid of my mom's would have went to school being able to tie her shoelaces. I'm just lucky my mom was a tough love mom, right? And and so she was a great mom, but she was totally and still is a very much of a tough suck-it-up buttercup kind of mother. <laughs> lucky for me, right? Exactly. And, and, yeah, and so... We need to to suck it up buttercups ourselves and go for what it needs. But we also need someone else. My mom was outside of myself on that front lawn to say, well, how's that working for you? And we need the Fatimas in our lives that can be outside of ourselves that, that maybe can fill our cup and say, look at your wellness. Look at your health. You just transfer those skills, those strengths, those successes into your business. What are you doing when you win that marathon? You're practicing, you're rallying the right lifelines, you got a great network, you got a great coach. Okay, so how do you do that kind of practice and those and the right kind of community and lifelines in your business world, right? You just transfer those skills. I've been in 40 countries and I did a lot of development work in Nepal and Mexico and Uganda and 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 all around and Jamaica. Did a lot of community work. So I didn't make a lot of money as an athlete or as a humanitarian teacher. But then in 2017, when I got outside of myself, where I was successful in humanitarian and successful in athlete, but not successful in business, except, you know, working for other people in corporations, I knew how to transfer those skills in corporations, but I wasn't doing it for myself. I was busy doing it for everybody else and a high and performance you coach. Yourself? And now I do it for myself, and I and very I ended up in 20 countries. Yeah, very successfully, right? 20 countries, 2018, yeah. 10 million viral views in in 2019, right? And exactly. And I mean, for magazine and look at these things, right? It's like holy cow! I never believed that was possible until I got outside of myself and got a high performance coach in my life and in faith. business too. You had faith in yourself as well. Tracy, yeah. you know, and even though you had the fear, you still did it anyway. You got into the action. Um, yep. It has been absolutely incredible to to speak to you. There is so much valuable information that you have provided for our listeners um, and all in your own time. So I really, really appreciate your time because, as we said, you're a very successful entrepreneur and businesswoman that speaks all over the world. So I feel honoured to have had you speaking to us on this show today. Um, is there anything else, that, any parting thoughts that you would like to leave with the audience? You know, like the limitless secret isn't a big secret, right? The, if I can do it, right, in athlete, in a humanitarian, in best-selling book, in speaking, in business, if I can do it as a four-way amputee, you can do it. No excuses, tough love, no excuses, but then no limits. And and Absolutely. you can do it. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Tracy, where can we find you? I know you've got a book, uh, speak all, all over the place. Where can people come and follow you? Because I'll I'll provide all the links to the to the daily goalcast video and your social media, but where can people come and see you or read more about you from your book? Ah, uh, that would be you know, if you search Unstoppable Tracy. Now Unstoppable has two P's in it unstoppable and Tracy I like to say I have no hands no legs and no E in Tracy it's just T-R-A-C-Y <laughs> unstoppable Tracy if you hashtag unstoppable Tracy you will find my YouTube you will find my web page you will find my Facebook my Instagram my Pinterest you'll find like LinkedIn and please like and follow and connect on on all of them or whichever one is your favorite and on all of them Somewhere is the Unstoppable You book. And people are welcome to a free download of the book. Uh, and, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not selling on there. I just, like, if I, 
if that that viral video comes out, I shared it with my viewers and I was on TV and I did an interview called Face Your Fears in January and I just share that. And this podcast probably will I'll share, right? So just bits of of more than inspiration. I was just going to say bits of inspiration, but you and I love to say together, this is a shared message between Fatima and I. We both like to say, you know, we don't want to just inspire people. We want to be sharing actionable results. We want to have people with life changing takeaways that they apply and take action on. And so it's not about feeling, oh, you are so inspiring. It's about feeling I am inspired to take action and I, my life has changed forevermore because I'm going to do it now as a result of listening to Fatima and Tracy. So please take action in your life. And so the Unstoppable You book is a free download for everyone. And maybe you share it or, or you search hashtag Unstoppable Tracy and you will find it. And it'd be my pleasure to share it. Beautiful, Tracy. Thank you so much. And yes, we do share that um, that message of great, you know, not just wanting to be an inspiration to people, but an inspiration to propel you into taking action and not accepting the often self-imposed limits that we put on on our own lives. One more question before I let you go. Your book, can we get a hard copy of it? Is there a print copy or? Yes. Absolutely, there's a print copy. And what's funny, somebody just, Australia, I just mailed a book to Australia. I don't know what the postage was, but I did just mail a book to Australia. So the same site, Unstoppable You Book, uh, or you search hashtag Unstoppable Tracy, and you'll find my website. And uh, there's a link to, and you can either get the free download with just an email, or if you want to purchase it, you can purchase the book too. Uh, But I'm if you're okay with online reading, I'm happy to send a free download. And I'd love to come to Australia. So oh, Australians yes, listening in, it, hire me for your next event. You're looking for mesmerizing. You're looking for people to say thank you for bringing her in. This was the best conference ever. Allow me to do that for you. And the, we'll be win-win. I get to come to Australia and you get to have a standing ovation guaranteed conference where they will love on you for and it would be amazing and I'll bring books and then they'll be on me and I'll have hard copies with me at a discounted 50% off because I'm there in person and they'll be in my suitcase (laughs) instead of being posted would be amazing I know I will share with everyone in my network anyone who's listening if you want to hear um, Tracy speak and you've got the means or you know someone who who does um Get in touch with Tracy because she's an absolutely phenomenal speaker and and woman. And for one lucky listener, um, I will be making sure we get, if it's okay with Tracy, a signed yeah. copy of your book that I will be oh. sending out. Um, and I, if you share and um, review this podcast, you'll go into the running to win that beautiful book um, signed oh. by Tracy. So, thank you so much, Tracy. You're phenomenal. Fatima. What a great idea. I love that. Wow. Wow. Wasn't that amazing, guys? Like so much gold in what Tracy shared with us. So please like, share, review this, share this episode with anyone that you think would take value from what Tracy has said. And I think everyone can take value from what Tracy has said. See you next time, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I truly hope you have found it beneficial and have taken some value from it. Hopefully, a lot. If you did, please, please share this show with anyone you feel may need to hear it. I would also absolutely love if you would take a minute or two to review this show on iTunes, Stitcher, or whichever platform you happen to be listening to it on. With your help, we can accomplish my mission to positively impact 10 million lives. That would be so awesome. Now, if you want to connect with me or my guests on other platforms, or if you want to send me an email with questions or ideas of guests to interview, please check out the show notes. I am so incredibly grateful to have had your time today, and I can't wait to have you on the next episode. Have a great day.